And so visualize Vajrasattva above the crown of your head, radiant white made of transparent light, as bright as the sun reflected off snow mountains. He's facing the same direction as you. He's one in nature with your own root guru. Embodies the perfect union of method and wisdom and the purification of ability of all the Buddhas. And if the visualization is too complex, you can just imagine radiant white light in the shape of an orb and feel connected to the presence of the enlightened mind, particularly the qualities of purification. And holding that awareness of Vajrasattva, now also visualize on your right side is your father or your father figure, whether he's living or dead, whether you had a good relationship with him or not. He's surrounded by all of your masculine presenting relatives. And on your left side is your mother or your mother figure, whether she's living or dead, whether you had a good relationship with her or not, surrounded by all your feminine presenting relatives. Your enemies and those sentient beings who make you agitated are in front of you, facing you. Whether they hurt you or someone you care about or the vulnerable, whether they're still alive or not, all those for whom you have aversion toward who you're not related to. And your friends and those to whom you are attached are seated behind you. Your spouse, your mentor, your best friend, all of your dear friends who you're not related to, all of those for whom you have great love and probably also great attachment. All other universal living beings in human form are surrounding you as far as you can imagine. So there are these four quadrants and outside the four quadrants is everyone else And you can think my negative actions are related to my relationships with you. My positive actions are related to my relationships with you. Therefore, I'm going to do this Vajrasattva practice on behalf of all of you, for all of us. And once again, visualize your object of refuge, the merit field in the space in front of you. You can do one into many, as in Georgia, or many into one, simple Shakyamuni Buddha. 
visualized in the space in front. So Vajrasattva above your crown, Shakyamuni Buddha straight out in front, all sentient beings around you. Whether you can visualize this or simply think that it is so, stabilize that awareness. And now think that all sentient beings together are taking refuge in the three jewels. And if you feel comfortable, you can recite aloud. I forever take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and in all the three vehicles, in the Dakinis of secret mantra yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas. But most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. I forever take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and in all the three vehicles, in the Dakinis of secret mantra yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas. But most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. I forever take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and in all the three vehicles, in the Dakinis of secret mantra yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas. But most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. Power of regret. So really connecting with generating the power of regret, which is seeing a fault to be a fault, clean and clear of guilt, no identification, gentle responsibility. The Guru Buddha is above, bearing witness to the whole process with perfect compassion and acceptance. So first recall the definition of negative karma, any action that results in suffering, usually an action motivated by ignorance, attachment, or aversion. And think, almost every action I do, 24 hours a day, is motivated by worldly concern, attachment to the comfort of this life. It is like this from birth to death in this life, and has been like that from beginningless rebirths. Nearly every action I have ever created has been non-virtuous, the cause of suffering. Not only that, but continuously I have also been breaking my pratamoksha, bodhisattva, and tantric vows. Worst of all, I've created the heaviest negative karma in relation to my virtuous friends, getting angry at them, generating wrong views, having non-devotional thoughts towards them, harming their holy body, and disobeying their advice. Having these negative imprints on my mental continuum is unbearable. It's as if I've swallowed a lethal poison. I must practice the antidote right away and purify all this negative karma immediately without a second's delay. In this way, generate strong feelings of urgency and regret. And so just touch into that that these negative actions are like having taken a poison. You are not the poison. You don't need to identify with the poison, but you know that it can harm you. And so you seek the antidote. And you increase the sense of urgency by remembering impermanence and death. Many people my age or younger have died. It's a miracle that I'm still alive and have this incredible opportunity to purify my negative karma. Death is certain, but its time is most uncertain. If I were to die right now, I would definitely be born in the lower realms. Because I could not practice Dharma, there I would remain in the lower realms for countless eons. Therefore, how unbelievably fortunate I am to be able to purify my negative karma right now, 
without even a second's delay by practicing the Vajrasattva meditation recitation. And you can add to that awareness that we're still in the days of miracles where merit is multiplied and so how incredibly practical and powerful this practice is. And you think, but I'm not practicing this Vajrasattva purification for myself alone. The purpose of my life is to release all hell beings, predas, animals, humans, asuras, suras, and intermediate state beings from all their suffering and its causes and to lead them to unsurpassed enlightenment. In order to do this, I must first reach enlightenment myself. Therefore, I must purify all my negative karma immediately by practicing the Vajrasattva meditation recitation. So a deep connection with bodhicitta. And then emphasize the visualization above your crown. Seated upon a lotus and moon seat are Vajrasattva, father and mother. Their bodies are white. Each one has one face and two arms. He holds a dorje and bell. She a curved knife and skull cup. They are embracing each other. The father is adorned with six mudras, the mother with five. He sits in the Vajra posture, she in the lotus. Vajrasattva is my root guru, the holy mind of all the Buddhas, the Dharmakaya, who out of his unbearable compassion, which embraces me and all other sentient beings, appears in this form to purify me and all others. So stabilizing meditation on the visualization of Vajrasattva. On a moon disk at Vajrasattva's heart stands a whom, encircled by a garland of the hundred syllable mantra. A powerful stream of white nectar flows down from the whom and mantra garland, and I am cleansed of all sickness, spirit harm, negative karma, and obscurations. And so you can just visualize streams of white nectar flowing down. As we recite the mantra, you can do the short one, Om Vajrasattva Hum. But first we'll start by just focusing on purifying the body. So think with this visualization and mantra recitation that all actions of killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct are being completely purified. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Deno Padisha Dido Me Bawa Sutto Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Anorakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsam Siddham Shriam Kuru Hum Ahahaha Ho Bago Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Muts Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe so the visualization, the mantra, and the mentality purify the body.
And keeping that same visualization, now think that you're purifying negativities of speech, lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, idle gossip. Um Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Dena Bharishta Rira Mibhav Sutta Kaya Mibhav Supo Kaya Mibhav Anarakta Mibhav Sava Siri Mepra Sava Kama Sutta Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagav Sava Tata Gata Vajra Mame Muta Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sat Ahum Pe Um, but as I was a Maya Manapalaya, but as I was a Padishna, did a meeple was at family, was who came to one or to me was, I was any member of some comes with my same shrink room. So that I got a bunch of other means of much about was my own pay. And now shift to purifying the mind, covetousness, ill will, wrong views. Um, but as I was a Maya Manapalaya. Padra Safa Dena Padisha Rida Mebawa Sudo Kaya Mebawa Supo Kaya Mebawa Ana Rakta Mebawa Sawa Siri Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsam Siram Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mut Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya And so think, from the crown of my head, Guru Vajrasattva says, child of the race, your negativities, obscurations, and broken and damaged pledges have been completely purified. Generate strong faith that all is completely purified, just as Guru Vajrasattva has said. And generating the power of restraint refraining from creating negativities again. Before Guru Vajrasattva, I vow never to again to commit those negative actions from which I can easily abstain and not to commit for a day, an hour, or at least a few seconds, those negative actions from which I find difficult to abstain. And so just reflect before Vajrasattva's compassionate gaze, a way that you will change negativities of body of speech and of mind, making very small practical plans to yourself, promises that you can keep. And when you come to those conclusions, just repeat and reinforce them to yourself.
and Guru Vajrasattva is extremely pleased with your pledge. Vajrasattva, father and mother, melt into light and dissolve into you. Your body, speech, and mind become inseparably one with Guru Vajrasattva's holy body, speech, and mind. In emptiness, there is no I, creator of negative karma. There is no action of creating negative karma. There is no negative karma created. And dedicate. Due to all these merits of the three times, collected by all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, myself, and other sentient beings, which appear to be real from their own side, but which are empty. May I, who appears to be real but is empty, achieve Guru Vajrasattva's enlightenment, which appears to be real but is empty, and lead all sentient beings who appear to be real but are totally empty to that enlightenment, which appears to be real but is empty. By myself alone, who appears to be real, but is also totally empty, non-existent from my own side. May the precious bodhicitta, the source of all happiness and success for myself and all other sentient beings, be generated within my own mind and in the minds of sentient beings without even a second's delay. And may that which has been generated increase. May I and all other sentient beings have Lama Tsongkhapa as our direct guru in all our lifetimes never be separated for even a second from the pure path that is greatly praised by the conqueror Buddhas and actualize the complete path, the three principal paths and the two stages of highest yoga tantra, the root of which is guru devotion within our minds as quickly as possible. Just as the brave Manjushri and Samatabhadra realize things as they are, I dedicate all these virtues in the best way that I may follow after them. Whatever dedication of the three times victorious ones gone to bliss have admired as best, in the same way I also perfectly dedicate all these roots of virtue so that I may perform good works. The wish-granting, wish-fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, the incomparably kind Supreme Tenzin Gatso, may you have long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Embodiment of the three divine refuges who blesses all. Gendon Tenzin, holder of the teachings, may your lifespan last for eternity. May your excellent deeds pervade all of time and space and continuously ripen for the nourishment of myself and others. Thanks for your practice, everyone, and uh, rejoice in your merits. And uh, later.